claiming top flight scalps. So it's with some trepidation that Terry Venables took his Tottenham team to a packed Valley Parade for a match described by Tony Gubber. Four First Division teams have lost cup ties at Valley Parade in the last 18 months and there's a capacity 16,000 crowd to see if Tottenham can survive today where Newcastle, Southampton, Oxford and most recently Everton have all lost. Spurs have already spent £4 million rebuilding half the team since that embarrassing fourth round FA Cup defeat at 3rd Division Port Vale last season. But the most expensive acquisition, £2 million, Paul Gascoigne is still a spectator having failed a late test on an injured ankle. It's a blow for Spurs as they face second division Bradford who are unbeaten since that remarkable 3-1 victory over Everton in the Littlewoods Cup last month. Bradford make one change today, Gavin Oliver still injured, Greg Abbott at left back and that means a move into more central defence for number eight Lee Sinnott, the only Bradford player to have reached an FA Cup final with Watford in 1984. Unmistakable figure of George Courtney, the FIFA referee in charge today. Spurs in all right, kick off the FA Cup campaign of 1989. And immediately a foul. Mark Leonard penalised. Tottenham with a free kick in the first few seconds. Gary Mabadou go forward, and George Courtney has to bring his authority to bear in the opening 10 seconds. Waddle and Fennick together with the free kick, an early opportunity to get the ball into Bradford's penalty area. Stewart. Now, with chance to get in an early cross. Mabbott's header! Important early save by Paul Tomlinson. Stewart, who got the opening for the left foot cross, and Gary Mabbott, the skipper, out jumping the defence. And Tomlinson had to make an important save in the first 30 seconds. Three is Abbott. Eleven is Leonard. Good build-up by Bradford. Palin. And he showed too much of that to Butters. And now Stewart on a chase. Oh, and he's got the legs of Evans and the tattle from the back. Well, Stewart thinks it should have been a free kick for Tottenham just outside the penalty area. But, uh, George Courtney, wave play on. David Evans is the defender who put in the tackle that one or two may feel, just clipped the legs of Stewart and pulled him back. Bergson. Pursued by Abbott. This is Waddle. Steps away from trouble neatly. Fairclough. Mitchell Thomas, who was almost hospitalised by that ball from Fairclough. Now the Spurs defender forward. Mitchell Thomas. And he's pulled the cross behind most of them. This is Stewart. This is Waddle. Oh, there's a break on now. This is Banks. Palin. Banks again. Back to Palin. Abbott. Greg Abbott, the left back with the best opportunity of the match, coming on that quick Bradford break. Banks and Palin involved. The little flick through by Banks was to try and find Palin. It came away from him and fell for the fullback, whose first time shot wasn't far enough to either side of Bobby Mims. And the gentleman to the right as we look there, with his, uh, he had his hand against his mouth. That's Brian Edwards, the Bradford physiotherapist, just looking up. The only man on the Bradford staff to have a FA Cup winner's medal back in 1958 with Bolton. Now, Mark Leonard. Well, that might turn out to be a good ball out to Mitchell. Well, I think Mitchell let that go, thinking it had been deflected and would be a Bradford throw. George Courtney telling Mitchell Thomas to get on with it. Walsh penalised, Bradford with a free kick. Just over five minutes to go to half time, and still no score. And Guy Butters again has gone with the big centre forward Ormond Royd, and he's following him out of the penalty area. That's Ormond Royd's little flick header, Leonard! Well, that's the tactic for Bradford. Look for the big, tall, six foot four Ian Ormond Royd, and those little flick ons might just produce the goal. 
that one to Mark Leonard who couldn't quite turn and get enough power into the shot to beat Bobby Mims. Tomlinson's come a long way out of his goal. He gathered it well. And with three and a half minutes to go to half time. Bradford with another free kick. Mark Leonard shouting instructions. And quickly taken out to Mitchell. Oh, it's a great goal! Spurs caught absolutely cold. Well, that's the goal that Bradford have been looking for. And didn't they catch Tottenham on their heels? Spurs were walking back into defensive positions. I think it was Mick Kennedy who took the free kick so quickly. He just played it out right. There it is. it is. It is Kennedy, the captain. And he spotted Mitchell, the fullback, coming up, whose shot wasn't hit all that strong, but it was perfectly placed wide of Mims. Bradford ahead 1 0. And that is exactly what this third round cup tie required. And we're going to Wembley is the chant from the Bradford crowd and with their side already into the quarterfinals of the Littlewoods Cup and leading first division Tottenham 1-0 at half time in this third round FA Cup tie they may well prove to be right Terry Venables with lots to think about as a result of that goal by Brian Mitchell and that really has ignited this match there are many thousands of Bradford fans who couldn't get a ticket for what may well prove to be another famous giant killing act by their side. But if you've got a football, well, you can still pass the afternoon. Experienced era international Chris Hutton on at the start of the second half for Tottenham, replacing the Icelandic international Gudni Bergson. And that's meant uh, Tottenham have had to reshape, and Chris Hutton has gone to left back. 30 years of age, kept by error 37 times. The Tottenham have never gone out of the FA Cup in the third round for the last 11 seasons. Stewart got a little push in the back then from David Evans as that uh, ball dropped. And Spurs in turn have taken the free kick quickly. Waddle! Oh, out from under the goalposts. And Banks, I think, was the saviour then. Leonard pops up on the right, shattered by Fairclough. And that'll be Bradford's throw. Mark Leonard switching sides. Kennedy with the throw. Kennedy again. Away by Fennick. Waddle for Stewart to chase with Jackson in attendance. He's got Walsh to aim at, and Mitchell's arrived. Paul Allen. Well, they've come out fired up at the start of the second half, Tottenham, and they'll know they've got to get back into this match quickly. Fennick looking for Mitchell Thomas. Edward Crosco, Walsh! Well, he's not the biggest player, Paul Walsh, and he didn't do enough with that to test Tomlinson. Mitchell Thomas popping up on the right now. He's gone to right back to replace Goodley Bergson, taken off at half time. Evans puts it into touch. Walsh. Looking for Mitchell Thomas. Allen, and away by Jackson, to Mark Leonard, popping up all over the field, Mark Leonard. Oh, that's a blatant obstruction, but George Courtney waves things on. Mitchell Thomas, Stewart, oh, what a pity. It was a good decision by our FIFA referee, George Courtney, because it was an obvious attempt at a block, but he let Mitchell Thomas go on, and the cross to pick out Paul Stewart, well, it was perfect, wasn't it? And didn't that look a goal all the way? And just wide of that far post. Kennedy upended by Paul Allen. Leonard. 
Bailin. Leonard, neat turn, but the flag's gone up. Will count. The flag went up on this near side. And one would have to say, the linesman there, Terry Lynch, put the flag up immediately. So Greg Abbott, disappointed, the goal doesn't count. With 26 minutes left to play, it looks as though Tottenham about to make a second substitution. Paul Moran getting ready, forward player. And this interruption will give Spurs the chance to bring him on. It's like Paul Allen who's having his name taken by George Courtney as Paul Moran comes on. Half of his ten appearances this season have been as a substitute. As Allen gets the yellow card. Bradford are defending like Tigers and Fairclough was holding back Leonard and well now there's a problem here he's had words with Fairclough once in this match already no doubt that he held back Mark Leonard in fact he's uh, made a bit of a mess of his shorts and Mark Leonard shows no modesty and I suppose the professionals would reflect that there was little option that Fairclough had there to be replaced by, I think it's number 12, Paul Jewell. Gets last minute instructions. Four minutes left. Fairclough for Spurs. To Allen. To Waddle. Moran on the right, now gone inside. And that looks like obstruction. So if Fenix gone forward to protest, but I don't think Spurs could expect any more from that. It was fairly clear obstruction. That's given Spurs an indirect free kick just inside the penalty area. And Spurs have got Seven forward. Allen. Paul yes. Allen's shot was always high and handsome. George Courtney looks at the watch. And there it is. A famous victory for Bradford where others have fallen in the past. Now it's the turn of Tottenham, and who will relish a fourth-round draw that brings them to Valley Parade? Brian Mitchell's goal, a great strike just before half-time. Terry Venables walks away. It's disappointment and dismay for the Tottenham dressing room, but it's joy and celebration here. The lights are burning on the roads that lead to town, and there'll be celebrations here tonight. Make no mistake of that. A victory that was in no way a fluke, which was thoroughly deserved, and which Bradford can savour.